Hello, everyone. My name is Ken Walkipel, and I'm excited to share over two dozen digital workplace updates with you uh, that you can start leveraging in your environments today. Now, keep watching the video as I will share a new product launch from Microsoft that's got everyone on social media excited. To lead is a remote first company based out of Canada. What makes a world class Microsoft 365 internet and digital workplace? All right, let's get into it. We'll start with SharePoint. Um, and one of the latest features that's come out is the ability to change the team site navigation. Generally, the differences between team sites and communication sites has been few features, but for end users, what they've seen is primarily the navigation is slightly different. The out of the box team site navigation, also known as a quick launch, is displayed on the left hand side. Site owners now can go to uh, site settings, change the look and navigation, and are able to change the orientation from vertical to horizontal. Now, what you'll see here is the team site navigation switched to horizontal, and it looks very similar to the communication site navigation which makes it much more familiar for users. Moving on, one of my favorite features, both in the SharePoint on-prem world, but also recently in the SharePoint online world, you have the ability to define and store uh, content types at a content type hub. Now, uh, with the online space, you did have the ability, uh, just like on-prem, for the content types from the hub to be published to multiple sites. And you could choose to select which sites they get published to, However, the biggest challenge is generally in the past was that as the number of sites and content types in your organization grew, site performance tended to degrade, leading to long delays while changes sync across the different sites. And not only were the content types being used in every site, there was a lot of resource consumption that was slowing this process down. If you're not familiar today, you can go ahead in your list and document libraries uh, are able to add a column. When you're adding a column, you can select a content type. From there, you can select multiple content types, one or more from the content type hub that are available for publishing and add that information or the columns that are associated with content type to your views as well. So you had this ability, but again, as I'm mentioning, uh, this did have huge uh, resource consumption and sometimes the delays from the content type hub took a little bit longer uh, to get to the associated sites. Now you have the ability to actually using PMP, CSOM, as well as most recently, uh, leverage site scripts. So there's a new site, site script verb that is available, add content types from hub. This allows you to manually sync content types from a content type hub to a specific site. If you're interested in learning more, please make sure you check out the site template JSON schema, but it's pretty straightforward. You specify the verb, add content types from hub, and then you specify the um, in, in an array, the content type IDs. Microsoft continues to improve the my feed web part, They've recently included the ability to uh, surface suggested tasks. These are tasks or actions you have request have requested by or of you, and they might also be tasks or actions you promised to do. These tasks are pulled from your email conversations and the ability to click on add to do or, or click on done and uh, be able to manage uh, your email and your activities that way. People highlights uh, are now also being surfaced up. Uh, the information is only visible for those who have chosen to share it on LinkedIn. So these compromise of birthdays, work anniversaries, change of roles for, for people who you work with. And you're able to, you will notice here, Charlotte has a new birthday today. You can choose to dismiss it or actually reach out and say, hey, um, happy birthday, uh, Charlotte, let's go out for lunch. Last but not least, being able to display meetings that are out of routine. So if you've defined uh, within Microsoft Outlook, your your working hours, if there's any meetings that are scheduled outside of your working hours, it will kind of prompt you and, and surface these in the My Feed web part. You have the ability to either propose a new time slot or um, action on it. Next up is the SharePoint migration tool user interface. You now have the ability to actually migrate workflows that, are, that were available before in um, SharePoint 2010. For example, the, there's two out of the box 2010 workflows, the approval and collect feedback. You can actually specify uh, those workflows and convert them over to Power Automate. Of course, this is a, a preview feature, meaning uh, it's only going to do very simple workflows at this time, but you can kind of see the excitement on being able to modernize your workflows relatively quickly. Very exciting. 
Um, next up is Microsoft Lists, and now the SharePoint app bar supports Microsoft Lists. And as you click on the Microsoft Lists icons, you have access to going directly to your list tab or viewing some of the lists that are being displayed. There's a recent and favorite list uh, listing of lists that are uh, displayed here. Microsoft is also adding the ability for those team sites where you have not just the shared documents library, but you have created other document libraries. They're providing a library navigation dropdown. Uh, the library dropdown will list all the libraries that are there and make it easy for users to switch between those different libraries. And one of my favorite features that keeps uh, getting better and better is um, you had in, in the past the ability for Microsoft lists to be able to create Power BI reports. And now you have the ability to do that as well for document libraries. Library data visualization is a huge, hugely important feature where users are able to see some of their data uh, that are stored in lists with you know, dozens and hundreds of thousands of uh, items, be able to visualize those that need their attention. Quite a bit of SharePoint updates. Let's move into Microsoft Search. For Microsoft Search, one of the uh, features, one, one thing to be aware of is uh, Conversation Search was recently launched for Bing.com. That's where all the latest and greatest um, search investments happen, uh, first at Bing.com. And then from there, um, now they're being rolled out to Office.com as well as SharePoint. You have the ability in the conversations to be able to view emails and team messages um, and be able to search them right within here that you have access to. Next up is Microsoft continues to improve their support for custom verticals in Microsoft Search. Now you've always had this ability um, uh, or recently had this ability to customize the out of the box verticals for uh, Microsoft um, as well as for uh, both the out of the box as well as custom ones recently. You have the ability to add, edit, delete, as well as disable uh, these. And this is some, a functionality you can continue to use going forward. Now, if you're not aware, uh, you can add these custom search verticals. So want to share quick experience for you as well. Um, you have the ability to add SharePoint as a content source or choose from dozens of search connectors from Amazon, SQL, Jira, Azure DevOps, Box, Documentum, File Shares, Jive, Oracle, Salesforce, as well as ServiceNow. And uh, you can either choose to have all the content searchable or limit the scope of this vertical by using KQL. Some UX and UI upgrades that are coming from Microsoft, they are updating the out of the box filters, the file type filter, uh, as well as the last modified filter are getting some UI improvements that makes it easier for users to kind of filter the search results and get the content that they need. If the, the search results are not returning the results that you're looking for, or they're not relevant, users generally didn't have uh, an ability in the past through the application to share feedback, and now they can. There's a, a button for feedback users can uh, use to capture and submit feedback within the search portal. Uh, it gives them a prompt for what type of feedback they're um, sharing, whether the information and the results that are displaying are helpful, or maybe they found a bug, or maybe they found the content was not appropriate. They have the ability to share that feedback, and this feedback goes directly to the search administrators within your environment. I would definitely encourage, we would definitely encourage that on a monthly basis, your search administrators look at this feedback and work to action or improve that experience for our users. Moving on to Microsoft Viva. Uh, there's some few updates here, uh, probably very much focused on adoption. Uh, Microsoft just released the Adoption Resource Center, uh, adoption.microsoft.com forward slash Viva. This has resources, email templates, PowerPoint presentations, as well as documents that you can use to uh, engage your organization, help train them as well as build champions as they, uh, as you leverage Microsoft Viva. And last but not least is Viva background images for Microsoft Teams. Microsoft re recently rebranded their icons and are continuing uh, this experience across all applications. The Microsoft Viva logos were recently updated, so Microsoft has also released a new collection of Teams background images as well. Moving on to Microsoft Teams. Um, one of the most fun features here is the walkie talkie. This is currently only available on IS, iOS, and it's generally available. The walkie talkie in Teams allows you to um, essentially use your Teams application, your mobile Teams application as a walkie talkie. So you're able to press a button and be able to directly talk to those that you've uh, set up connections with. Please be aware walkie talkie is not pre-installed. So to enable this feature for users in your organization, 
your team's admin has to include walkie-talkie in the app setup policy and assign it to users. Next up is in um, this remote first world that we're living in. A lot of us have our video turned on. And it's great to be able to interact and engage directly with those that you're connecting with. Sometimes uh, the your own video gets a little bit distracting because you're always wondering how you look and uh, just it, it ends up being a little bit more information that you have to process. So um, if you desire to have your video on, you have the ability now to also hide your video um, so that you can focus on those that do have their video on and engage with them. Next up is the ability to manage teams and channels connected team sites. In the SharePoint Event Center, on the active sites page, uh, it will now also list Microsoft Teams, um, as well as it'll allow you to filter those SharePoint sites that are Teams connected. So there's a new Teams view that filters the site list to only sites that are Teams connected, as well as for those teams that have private or shared channel sites, it also call that out. And uh, a controversial uh, feature that was recently planned to be launched. Uh, however, there's a lot of feedback from Microsoft. Um, they had a new uh, policy attribute to control the expiration um, where they were they had set a default and they were planning to launch this in January 2022. They had a default where the meetings would uh, recordings in your tenant would auto expire after 30 to 60 days. And uh, after quite a bit of feedback, they pushed this out to March and uh, and, uh, you know, stay tuned. We'll give you updates as we get nearer to March on what the default is and how you can actually extend that expiration uh, auto expire feature in your tenant. Moving on to Microsoft lists. Um, if you weren't already aware, this should be now available in almost everyone's tenant. So in your in your sites, you have the ability to, of course, create multiple lists. And now you have the ability to leverage lookup columns and connect different lists together. So you can select uh, the lookup column in your list and then specify the list as a source and be able to connect those uh, together. So very, very cool uh, functionality uh, that was available before in SharePoint on-prem and now is available in SharePoint online. Microsoft also released a, a fan favorite, uh, which is the board view for Microsoft lists. When you're creating a view, you now have the ability to select board as an option, as well as organize the board by a specific field in your list, in this case, status. And then from there, um, when you switch that view, you have the ability to then drag and drop uh, these list items from one status to another, and it automatically updates that list um, status column as well. All right, and then now to a new product announcement that Microsoft recently uh, launched. Microsoft lists are now available for those who have Microsoft accounts. In the past, Microsoft list was only available for those with enterprise accounts. Uh, where their organization had a tenant. And now if you just have a Microsoft account, um, you can go to list.live.com and sign in with your uh, Microsoft service account. Uh, keep in mind, this is only available, I believe, to the first 200,000 users that sign up. And uh, there are some limitations. I do want to highlight as well for the, uh, the difference between the enterprise version as well as the personal version. Uh, this MSA preview allows each user to create 50 lists with each list containing up to 1,500 items and rows and 200 megs of attachments and storage. Now, there are some features that are currently not included in the preview, search functionality, rules that trigger, email notifications, version history, connected lists, Teams integration, comments, mentions, connections to external data sources, integrations with Power Apps and Power Automate, uh, and a few others. So um, this is a preview that will continue to improve. And, and if you've got a personal account, definitely encourage you to check it out so that you're able to stay connected, track information, and manage logistics. All right, a few miscellaneous updates here for you guys. The office.com experience continues to get uh, small, but intentional uh, updates that help kind of uh, your, uh, you to improve how you work within your digital workplace. You have the ability to create content uh, directly from the app bar. You have the ability to view your actions that we saw in the my uh, home feed web part, as well as access to content that you've had in the past. So um, you can view all your content uh, or view by recently opened, shared, and favorites. 
uh, keep in mind this office.com experience will continue to update and so look forward to updates in, in the coming uh, couple months here as well. And last but not least, from OneDrive for business, the copy link functionality uh, is changing slightly. In the past, whenever you opened up the share link, a link automatically got created. Um, so now when users interact with OneDrive or SharePoint uh, share control, they'll easily be able to change their link permissions before creating a link and pasting it to the app of their choice. They'll also be able to change the link settings post creation directly inside the confirmation box. Please do note that some users in your digital workplace may see this feature before other users within your organization. That's it. Thank you so much for joining this edition of Digital Workplace Updates. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment below on your favorite feature.